going on, guys? Welcome back to another podcast. I'm here with Peter and Tyler from the Adventure Podcast. And yeah, so how are you guys doing? I don't know who's going to answer first. This is the first time I've done this like three-way talk. So it's like, oh, who goes first? Yeah, we do it all the time. So I think we're more used to it. Uh, doing good, you know, just, just trying to survive COVID with my family. just like everybody else. Yeah, yeah. Where are you located? I live in Calgary, Alberta. Oh, okay, okay. So yeah. how did, yeah. how did the adventure podcast come about? Like, how did you two meet? Like, I, like I said, before we started, I know, I know Tyler, but Peter, let's hear a bit about you, man. Let's, let's hear. Yeah. I totally, you. totally yeah. different origin story uh, for right. me. Like not, I've never been, I've been an avid cyclist for decades, but never been paid to ride a bike. So totally different background than Tyler. Yeah. Um, I actually, our origin story is I actually ran a bicycle trade show in Calgary and in Edmonton. Okay. Which is the other big city in Alberta. And um, as, as part of those shows, we had a speaker series and then we thought it'd be cool to have somebody uh, come. And we had a lot of really cool speakers, but we, we were thinking about somebody from that sort of era of cycling and reached out to Tyler uh, and he was able to do it. He actually came up and spoke at both shows and did a really, um, he did a really great, great talk about his career and, and doping and giving back an Olympic medal. And like, it was pretty, yeah. pretty heavy and pretty moving stuff. And I, I had read his book too. And that's why he was one of the people we wanted to reach out to because it was the first account that I read that I was like, holy shit, everything in this book is, is obviously true. You know, it's pretty it was raw. the first time, pretty raw, yeah, pretty raw. And like, I had a lot of respect for the fact that he, his whole book was a, basically about it. Not like, like, a, like a footnote, yeah. like a lot of guys from that era did. Right. Yeah. So I, I, I thought it was a crazy book and I was a fan of watching him on the road too. So we had him up and talk to talk and he did an awesome job. And then he and his head coach at his training company, Jim Capra, um, and my business partner in those bike shows, who's also my cousin named Sasha, the four of us just hit it off and Sweet. had a great time and hanging out at those two shows. And then we decided to put on a bike camp uh, in Banff, which is about an hour from where I live. It's where Sasha is based out of. Um, and we did a couple of training camps there, which were super fun. And then from there, I'd been wanting to do this for a while. And um, I selfishly loved the idea of having a co-host because like, unlike what you do, I can always play off Tyler a little bit, or even if we want to record an episode without a guest, we can do that because something crazy happened at the Tour de France and we want to, we want to chat about it or whatever. Right. Trust me. I'm so, myself on that. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. it's worked out really good. And then, so, I mean, I had a short list of people that I wanted to like, at least ask. And obviously, you know, Tyler's background speaks for itself. Um, and he's been a, a super, super cool co-host and and i know i know that there's people who've said yes to jump on with us because it's tyler hamilton so you yeah. know it's worked out i think really really well for a lot of reasons but we've had a ton of fun i didn't know if we would do two episodes or if we would do you know i didn't know and we just started out and said like as long as we're having a good time we'll keep doing it how many episodes yeah. are you in right now 58 cool. yeah and it's yeah. been so much fun it's been so much fun i love yeah. talking to people talking to people just uh you know from all different parts of the world and uh, different upbringings. And I don't know, every, every episode I've learned many, many things for sure. And John, I listened to a couple of your, uh, your podcasts just recently and uh, you're doing an awesome job. You're doing a great <laughs> Thanks, job. Man. It's yeah, great. Yeah. yeah it's, been, a it's, it's a lot of fun, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's been, it's been interesting. Cause like we chatted before this, I think everybody and their mom has started a podcast and, and COVID <laughs> has created that, uh, that midlife crisis for everyone to go, okay, what are we going to do? How are we going to please people? How are we going to create content? And then boom, that podcast kind of came about. And honestly, half these guests, I don't even know, like I meet them through the podcast, which is, which is super cool and super fun. Yeah. It's crazy to me how quick people are like, yeah, I'll jump on. And we just get to chat. And the next thing you know, we become friends right after it. So, uh, <clears throat> but Tyler, just to dive into a bit of, a bit of your background. Um, if you guys don't know who Tyler Hamilton is, you definitely need to look it up. Um, probably, probably one of my favorite kind of, I, I like to call you guys characters from that era because yeah. it's almost like so unreal that America had such a dominant team like that. And what's cool is, is you, you each have your own stories. You each have your own yeah. accounts. Um, and your account is probably one of my favorite just because of the amount that you could suffer 
Um, yeah. And around the time that I was reading your book, I had knocked out uh, two teeth. And I mean, just clean, square, knocked out. Worst pain I had ever felt. And I had also separated my AC. And I was at the chapter, and the AC joint is right in your, you know, in your shoulder where the collarbone meets. I think the scapula, somewhere in there. But anyways, you had just broken your collarbone. I think it was, what, stage five or so. And you ground your teeth down just from gritting your teeth so hard. Or at least that was a, a comment in the book. Can you, can you kind of dive into that? Like, when did you realize that you were grinding your teeth down, that you were suffering so hard? Well, you know, I think it was just whether I was awake or asleep, I think I was just grinding my teeth. Yeah. You know, with, with, uh, it was stage, on stage one, there was a huge pile up at the finish, you know just a mass crash. I think, I don't know, 60 or 70 riders went down and, and, it, it, and you know, and some riders got, were totally unscathed. I think Lance crashed. He, he was unscathed, you know, Levi light primer. I think he broke his hip. So he was out, you know, yeah. I fractured my collarbone, but luckily he was still in one piece, you know, wasn't fully displaced like that. Uh, okay. So I was pretty fortunate there, but you know, another, another crash would have just snapped it. So did you uh, have to, but yeah, I mean, I don't know my, you know, I, my whole, I think I was kind of born with an ability to suffer. I don't know. I'm yeah. from New England. I'm from Massachusetts, like pretty hardy folk and, you know, kind of <laughs> grin and bear type folk. And um, I don't know, my whole life, I think I had an extra ability to deal with pain, maybe, maybe a little bit better, better than others. I don't know. In cycling for me, I always, you know, I always thought to myself, eventually they'll, uh, eventually people will wear out. So just like, just, deal with the pain, suffer through it. And, um, eventually good things will happen. So that was right kind on. of my mantra. Right on. No, that's, that's awesome. So how long, how long have you guys been doing the podcast roughly? What is it's it like been? just over a year, just over a year. So yep. in 2020, yep. it's been, it's been a pretty, pretty crazy year. It's been a rough year. And so mm. what, what kind of, what kind what kind of adventures have you guys been up to? I mean, outside the podcast, I mean, you guys call yourself the adventure podcast. So to me, that kind of gives yourself a bit of, bit of open-mindedness. You have a bit, you're interviewing more than just cyclists, right? And so um, what kind of adventures have you guys been up to besides just cycling and uh, exploring, especially during this COVID time? Yeah. yeah. My kind of adventure these days is kind of bikepacking. I like getting out on the bike and going on some, some crazy epic journey. Um, mm -hmm. You know, either I live in Western Montana, so, you know, Montana is a good spot for it. I get, I, I work down in Colorado, so I'm there pretty, pretty often, uh, you know, Colorado's not a bad spot, but yeah. Um, you know, where, wherever you go, you bring your bike and, um, there's always a good place to go see, and, you know, um, it's a, when I was a, a, a pro cyclist, I mean, I never thought, I mean, bike touring or bike packing was, uh, I, I never even thought twice about it. Yeah. Um, but it, it really opened my eyes to, you know, a new way to see the world. And, uh, so I try to, wherever, whenever I travel, I try to either bring a bike or go, uh, you know, rent a bike and get out and explore. It's, uh, yeah, it's fun. And I don't really, you know, don't look at, don't worry about numbers anymore. Just go out and see the, you know, the beautiful world that we live in. There's, yeah, there's a lot to be discovered. Uh, I also like hiking and, um, paddle boarding down rivers here in western montana that's been pretty awesome how about you pete what kind of adventures do you do uh <laughs> well yeah this year was like diy yeah. as much as possible yeah. yeah you know like i tried to follow along tyler did a tyler and actually jim and i all did a, a diy gravel event that ted king had kind of gotten going early in the pandemic i think that was yeah, like yeah. i don't know like may um uh I, I, and then I did some things that I wouldn't have normally otherwise done. Like I would typically do a bike trip or two every year and those were like totally off. So I repurposed some of that time to do some of the bigger rides around me. Like there's a ride called the high Rockies trail, which is like about 90 kilometers of single track, yeah. just rolling single track. Like it's just unbelievable. Um, and did that like in a day, like point to point. Um, you know, so I had a couple of big mountain bike days, like five, six, seven, eight hour rides. Awesome. Um, but, and, but, but it was a lot of solo training, yeah. you know, a lot of lo lonely mornings out on the highway on my road <laughs> bike. And I did quite a bit of trail running, but no, no real events. They weren't really happening here. Yeah. Um, so unfortunately I didn't have anything that I could like sort of bucket list, but, um, 
but made the most of it. And I had like, I put a lot of hours into to running and cycling for sure this year. So, I mean, like the pandemics had some silver linings for, for me yeah. anyways. Yeah. Yeah. What's it like in Canada right now? I mean, it's, um, we've had a few Canadian guests on and, and, and it seems to be a lot tamer than it is in the States. I mean, here we're just, it depends on what state you're in based on right. how we're handling it. But what's, what's Canada like? I mean, cause we just recently heard, I think with the tour down under, like Australia is going full gas. Like if anything, they're expanding it. And that's just because they've been able to kind of keep clothes tight on the borders and everything. So. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a smaller country and it's an Island. So they have some built in advantages. Right. But like, if you, it's funny, if you'd asked me that even uh, six weeks ago, I would have said that we were in pretty good shape, but it's a total shit show right now. It's, it's pretty bad. Yeah. Our numbers are pretty bad and that goes for pretty much every province. Like I was just telling Tyler earlier today that we, Like, I think as a province, we had like, it was somewhere around three or 350 positive cases in a day was the record in in like the worst of times, which I think was probably May or April. And then we just had like three days in a row where we were like 1800. So it's like five times worse than it was in the spring. So we just got like shut down hard. Like they shut restaurants, they shut, they shut barbershops. Like that's all done for five weeks, hard reset. Um, ban on on uh on any personal gatherings or or meetings so like indoor or outdoor it's like if you don't live with these people like don't see them keep to yourself let's get this under control which is hard to disagree with yeah. when you see numbers like that but yeah unfortunately the like a combination of things trying to start back up like activities um school and uh and then cold weather you know people are indoors and just not not doing the right thing all the time so we're hanging on, I'd say now, yeah. like, and now my wife and I are like, we just need to get to this vaccine without getting it now, because I don't want to yeah. find out what the long-term consequences are and stuff. Cause there probably are some, and I just don't like, let's just get there. You know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I feel the same. My wife What's it like it, in the Springs there. Uh, it's, it's pretty nuts. Like just for the fact of, I live in a very, like, I live in a very military central area. So we have Fort Carson, um, which yeah. like when this all started, people were getting sent from like Boulder and Denver area to Fort Carson to quarantine. Did you say you got it or your wife got it? So my wife had it and for two weeks I was in the same bed as her, you know, slept next to her. I was training 20 hours, 25 hours a week. Never got it. I trained by myself. Um, I never, I never got it. And, and, and I was talking to an athlete that I coach and he, he, and I'm going to butcher this and hopefully there's some doctor listening to this that can go, no, John, like this is what it is. But something about O blood, this is all I know. O blood has a oh, bit yeah. of immunity to it. And I don't, yeah. I don't know what that is. No I'm shit. not a scientist, I didn't know that. but yep. O blood supposedly, um, no matter your health, it's just the blood like that has the immunity to it. Yep. And my girlfriend's really? blood. Yep, yep. Yeah. 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 And it's that's not, what they're so saying that's, that's what they're saying yeah so that's yeah. crazy i might if the world ends because of it i might be the last one standing it's okay guys you know, <laughs> I, I fought against the zombies and all that stuff and it was all good but uh but yeah it's it's not super crazy here i think i think the hard part of it about it here especially for a guy like me who's training on the track i haven't seen a track since october last world cup and that was in europe Um, so the track facilities are closed. The gym is closed. I can't get into the OTC. Um, if I'm not going to the Olympics, like all that stuff is next. And so it's kind of, it's kind of rough because it's hard to go, Hey, we'll go to 2024 now because we'll definitely qualify when, you know, we were already behind in 2019. We have a lot to make up. So any time off the track is bad time for me. Um, but just taking this time to ride my bike, explore. I bought a mountain bike, uh, during this time nice. I was going to do Leadville. Um, I was going to do Leadville and steamboat. Um, and so it's been good. Uh, I think the lightest week I've had in the last, since June, July, July, the lightest week I've had hours wise, um, has been probably like 18 hours. Just been, ex- just been exploring adventure experience. Good for you. Oh, it's been good great. For you. And so it's been, it's been a it's been a good awakening because I've been used to just riding four minutes, turning left, VO2 max efforts, full gas all the time. Now I'm like hiking over creek crossings and, um, you know, 
I ride six hours away from the house, seven hours away from the house. And then it's like, well, I guess we'll just camp out here and then we'll ride back next morning. So it's been good. It's been good. It's been, it's been fun. I've, I've loved that part of it. And, and honestly, um, you know, Tyler, this kind of dives into my next question with you. It's like, do you kind of think some of like the old school pro is meeting up with these bike packing style? Like, I mean, back in the day, I felt like the old school pros, you know, they would, they would train without helmets. They would train in just, you know, jerseys, t-shirts, just kind of exploring, adventuring. Yeah. They're getting training in, but now you yeah. have these bike packers who t-shirts, no helmets, you know, farm, you know, the big, big sun farm hats, just going out and exploring. I mean, yeah. around your time frame, there wasn't a Garmin. There wasn't really power meters. Like those things weren't what people are using and uploading the ride. Like you guys oh, yeah. went out and rode. I used to live with Jeff yeah. Pierce and that was, he used, oh, yeah. he used to get so frustrated. He would see my, uh, he would see my, me charging my Wahoo. Like, and he was like, I thought you were going to leave like an hour ago. I was like, Oh, I didn't, didn't charge it long enough. He's like, I remember when we would just take a map and I would just go straight down 24, which is a road over here near Pikes Peak. I'd go yeah. straight down 24. I'd look at my watch and then I'd flip it after three hours. That's how yeah. I rode. And so what, what's your kind of thoughts on that? Like, cause you, you did make a comment on the beginning of the podcast, how you've gotten into bike packing. What's your kind of comments on that? Yeah. I mean, well, I love bike packing. It's great. And it, yeah, it does kind of remind me of the early years of cycling. You know, I mean, when I first started, it was all about, yeah, they call it long, LSD, long, slow distance, you know, yeah. just big, big hours on the bike. It didn't really matter how fast you rode, but it was just big hours. Everybody talked about how many hours they were doing. Yeah. You know, s slowly that transitioned into the heart rate monitor and then power meter and all that. But, um, you know, after my career, after I, my career ended, you know, I, I put the bike down for a bunch of years and didn't wasn't really interested in riding and um a mutual friend of our uh, pete and i this guy ryan corey was a, a big uh international bike packing superstar i'd say yeah. wouldn't you say pete and yeah uh, yep he, he was there at one of those uh he was there actually at both of those uh canadian bike shows that pete was talking about earlier um ryan was an incredible person and the uh told me a told me about bike packing and explained how kind of how easy it was to do. And, uh, he kind of gave me the, um, inspiration to try it and yeah, I've fallen in love with it and did a cool three week bike pack trip down in, uh, Argentina and Chile all by myself, just zigzagging down on this road called the Carcaterra Austral, which is just insanely beautiful. Yeah. Um, yeah ridden on like the western uh coast of ireland solo that was pretty awesome yeah done a few trips with my girlfriend it's a it's awesome to do by yourself and with uh you know people in common yeah and um you know just slow it's kind of you know when you when you feel like stop and take a picture stop and take a picture and, you know it's not about how fast you ride but just about you know enjoying the whole process and being out there and you know, typically uh, it takes you a day or, day or two to kind of, kind of um, let everything kind of even out, and then you you um, you find this real amazing peace beneath it all. So it takes a, a few days to kind of slow down because we're all so busy and you know emails and text messages, and you're always just busy, busy, busy. And so yeah, getting out there on the open road is um, yeah, it's a great feeling. You know, some I'll, I'll I'll do for the rest of my life for sure. And no, that's, uh, you know, that's awesome. Pete's Pete's gonna get into it. Pete's uh, he's a newbie. No, yeah, I still haven't I haven't done it. Pete, Not yet. I am too, man. And like yeah. honestly, we should just all get together. If COVID's still a thing, we should get to we get tested. We do this right, and because I feel like we'll all be on the same playing field. Like, cause I'm a big dude. Tyler might ride away from me and you, Pete, but we should do the Colorado Trail together. Oh uh, yeah, just, I like that. Just, oh man. Just that would be just amazing. Like that. Full gas and just explore and, and enjoy it and, and camp out. And I mean, it would it'd be awesome. And like, yeah. that's on my bucket list for sure. I think if if nothing happens this season, like if if, if it if it gets canceled, I'm just gonna do it. Like, just knock it out um, because there, I might not ever get another opportunity. You know? 
we'll call it team pursuit training. Team pursuit All training. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just, it'll, it's, it'll be mental training, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just throw you right into it. But yeah, that, that is a bucket list ride for me for sure. Yeah. That's, that sounds incredible. Yeah. yeah. The Colorado Trail. Yeah, it does. It does. And to, to bike pack, I, I definitely, I need to get out there and do it. And there's so many different versions of what you can do. You can do three yeah. weeks in Patagonia or you can do an overnighter to get your feet wet. Right. And we've talked to people on our show about exactly that. Like it's so much, it's not totally accessible. You probably want to get a little bit of gear, but depending on where you're riding, you probably have a bike that works. It's maybe not the perfect bike, but you can, you can make yeah. it work. And there's all kinds of super frigging cool gear and bags and specifically designed for it. Um, yeah, I need to do it for sure. Yeah. And I think, I honestly think like, what's cool about bike packing is you it's just like road cycling in the sense that you can make it as extreme as you want. Right. Um, and by that, I mean, you can stay in a hostel, you can stay in a hotel or you can yeah. stay in a bivy right next to a railroad track. I don't know. You can do whatever yeah. you want. Like, and, and that's, what's I think really cool about it. And so when you hear this big quote unquote self-supported, like it's, it's up to your desire how supported and unsupported you want that to be. So like the Colorado trail, I think there's a little bit of camping that needs to be done in the woods, but there's, there's some small towns that you can pop off into and stay in a hostel or stay in a hotel. Um, Cause how long is the whole thing? Uh, 800 kilometers, I think. Right. Tyler, do you know? Yeah, but I, I thought it was Something 500 like miles. That. So that's yeah. about right. Yeah. So yeah. it's, yeah. And I think Russ Finsterwald and Carrie Warner just did it. I think it was like eight days. Uh, wow. and then Pace and McKelvin tried to do it. Um, yeah, we had F Pace on our show. He tried to FKT that sucker, and uh, I, I heard him. He, yeah, I don't know if he would say he almost died, but it looked like he almost died. <laughs> he was he was yeah. pretty messed up. Yeah, and so and it would be interesting to see like a guy like Lachlan or Ted King or one of those guys try to just go for it and ride. But they also have that ride that Ted King just did that I'm really intrigued in. Yeah. The, the high, was it the high country, Arkansas or I -car yeah. Arkansas high it, country? Yeah. I don't, you know, I've never even gone to the webpage, so I don't, I can't claim to be an expert on that race, but I think it essentially circumnavigates the state, right? Yeah. Yeah, it does. And I think it's um, you, you get a choice you can either do it clockwise or counterclockwise. And so the leaders, there was the two people, like, so Ted was racing against one other guy. They passed each other. Um, but like one was still in second place, if that makes sense. So like, right. They're still passing each other. And so they're getting to the same finish line, but it's just, it's kind of interesting how that, how that works out. And so, and, and the way you choose to do it. Um, so yeah, that's another one that's kind of like popping up on my bucket list, which, Ted did it in four and a half days. Yeah, so like I'm four thinking, four days, 20 hours or something like that. So yeah. I'm thinking closer to six days for me, seven days, you know. Just, and that would still be a huge effort. Yeah. And and that's and that's if that's if I get past the third day, right? So a lot of people, it's crazy. Around the third, fourth day, a lot of people were dropping out. Um, whether hmm. they were delirious, one guy got hit by a car. Um, oh. you know, some some guys overcooked it early on and um, it, it's, it's pretty intense, but one thing that I did do this year that, you know, have, I'm curious now that we're talking about adventures, have you guys done is white rim in Utah. I've never, I've never been on that trail. Have you Ty? Yeah. I think I've done part of it. Yeah. I don't think I've done the whole thing before. No. no. Okay. So that's something you guys got to add on to the list, especially if you're going to practice for bike packing, because you can do it one of two ways. You can do it in three days or you can do it in one. The, yeah. The cool thing is, is everybody does it in three days um, and they enjoy it. Uh, I did it in one day um, and I thought I was going to die. Yeah. Cause you pretty much like in the, in the ride itself, you, once you get about 40 miles out, because like once you start, there's no water, there's no access to anybody, no cell right. service. You're pretty much out there. Once you're about 20, 30, 40 miles in, like at that point, you can flip it if you want, but you're just going to do the same distance if you would just finish it. Right. And so yeah. it gets, it gets pretty hairy. It gets pretty dicey. And so like packing is, is a huge essential. And so if you're practicing for bike packing, that's a good place to just practice because it's small, it's contained and uh, kind of gives you an idea of what you would need day to day, I think. But uh, It's not that technical yeah. though, right? Like it's totally doable oh, in a day, right? A hundred percent. Yeah. It's a hundred percent doable in a day. I think, uh, 
I did it in eight hours. It's a hundred miles. Um, and it's on ATV trails and it essentially you descend either way you go in, whether clockwise or counterclockwise, you descend and you climb out no matter how you do it. Um, the, if you go counterclockwise, it's a bigger climb. It's around six, 7,000 feet of climbing and all the climbing's at the end. Um, it's about a three mile climb up Schaefer trail. And that's how the guys are FKTing it. So like when Glenn right. Simmons did it, he did Schaefer trail first, then dropped in and then finished at the base of Schaefer trail. So he did a little bit different pace. And when he did it drops in at horse tooth and finishes on safe Schaefer trail. Same with Pete Stetna. That's the way they, yeah. that's the way they're doing right. it. Uh, Cause it has the most climbing um, and it finishes at a campsite, which is kind of cool. So your last bit and stretch is at your campsite. Um, but yeah, so those guys, those guys are doing it in like five and a half hours and I did it in, yeah, it's like, crazy. It's insane. And so I did it in eight and a half and honestly it would have been closer to nine, 10 if it wasn't for uh, Walt and Diane, who I'll never forget, uh, gave me water at the top of Schaefer. Um, I ran out of water about 80 miles in <laughs> and, uh, oh. thought, it, thought it was going to be game over. Um, but anyways, so that let's, let's dive into. That's know. cool. That's cool. Isn't that exciting about, you know, with COVID, like people have become really creative in like yeah. all these FKTs or whatever, FTKs. What are they called? No, you got it. You got FKTs. it. Yeah, I, I mix them up. And, uh, yeah. or like the Everesting challenge, like that got so popular and it's really neat. Everybody's, uh, you know, people are down, but they're not out. And, uh, with a little creativity, they can, uh, you know, still make a go at it, you know? No, yeah. It's, it, it's, it's been fun it's, to watch. It's super awesome. And like, oh man, I just lost you guys for a second. Hold yep. on a second. Oh, there we go. And uh, yeah, it's it's super awesome. And like, and, and just the random, like the Everest challenges and just like yeah. the random, like crazy little things. So I'm kind of interested, like as, as sad as this is, you know, I'm, I'm kind of interested to see what people are doing in 2021, even when there is racing back. I mean, it's not like they're going to yeah. cancel esports world championships, which just went off. Right. You know, I feel like they'll do that again next year. Um, for sure. Oh, for sure. You know, for sure. And, and so yeah. a lot of those things, like while COVID is a very sad and scary thing, my currently my, um, my wife's grandmother has it and is in the hospital with it, oh. which is unfortunate. Um, but silver lining, it has opened up opportunities for, for new adventures and new, new avenues and, and exciting things. Um, but yeah, guys, so we're, we're, we're running close on time. And so I kind of wanted to get you guys uh, one more question or two more questions. Um, 2021, let's say, let's say there's no COVID. What, what's, what's it looking like for the adventure, uh, venture podcast? What's, what's the goals for 2021 for you guys, whether that's, ex, you know, exploring or something cool for the podcast. What, what are you guys thinking? Well, I sure hope we keep growing the podcast and I think we will as it spreads by word of mouth and stuff. I, so that's, that's exciting. And, uh, you know, like when we started out, I, I, we thought maybe we'd do one or two a month, but yeah. now we're like, man, we could talk to somebody every day. Like there's just so many cool people to talk to and you keep opening all these doors you meet somebody and then you realize that they know this person and you haven't heard of that person, but then you check them out and you're like, that's awesome. That'd be a cool For guest. Sure. So we definitely want to grow that way. Um, if I was pretending there was no COVID, I would probably try and get into some events. Um, given that there will certainly be COVID for at least a good portion of the year. Um, I can't, I came up with my own goal for next year to do a, at least, at least a hundred kilometer mountain bike ride, a 200 kilometer gravel ride, and a 300 K road ride. Cause there's just some nice, yeah. there's just some nice metrics around that for me. So yeah. I'll do that. And, um, I, I do run a race here in Southern Alberta called the Crow's Nest Pass 100, which is a mountain bike race. And, uh, I'll hopefully, well, I, I partly run it. So I, hopefully we'll get to race that too. Hopefully we can do it. So that's kind of what I have on the radar. Um, oh, and Tyler and I might try and put together a road ride in, um, in BC, Sweet. uh, like end of August. Why BC? So, a uh, BC, sorry, British oh, Columbia. BC. Yeah. Right, so, right which there. is sort of like if you look at Missoula and Calgary on a map, we can meet pretty much like within a seven hour drive each um, okay. in the Okanagan, which is a beautiful, beautiful region. Um, so, we might try and do that. So, people can stay tuned on that. We'll have, um, which we'll put out to put out to listeners and hopefully have a bunch of people attend it. N not like, not a race though, just like 
just riding bikes and hanging out. Awesome. I'm upgrading our Zoom as we speak right now. Um, and that's why I'm kind of looking off. No problem. Um, oh, I'll get it. I'll get it. Yeah. So updating that. Uh, and John, how about you? So with, you haven't been to, together with a team since October? Man, there hasn't really been a team. And that's like the really, oh, really sad, sorry. scary thing. And uh, which, you know, honestly, I don't, I don't know about your, like, um, you know, what it was like for you back in the day. I mean, I sent, you know, I've read the books. I've heard nine different accounts, you know, from everybody. Everybody has their own story, yeah. right? Um, and I have my own with, with the team pursuit in the sense that um, as we got close to the Olympics, things got tighter. Uh, we were in and out coaches. Um, we were really tight knit in 2017 when we were the group that came in. We were the first team pursuit team setting records. And even if you weren't going to the World Cups, you weren't really bitter. You were just kind of like, I'll get my chance, you know, I just need to work harder or you, you, you kind of understood. Right. And so, um, to see the, uh, to see the, like the people come in and out of the program and us kind of our core stay there, um, was really interesting. But as we got closer to 2019, you know, Lambie's getting better. Uh, Lambie's got bigger goals to, to go for the IP. Um, we're also at this point, it, it's a one man team pursuit. We're trying to keep up with this guy who's insane. And so it's, that creates some frustration that creates some tension that creates a whole new team dynamic in the sense of people are having to switch positions because you're having yeah. to, you're almost having to slow Lambie down to get three across the line at this point. And, and so there's frustration everywhere. And so then everybody's like starting to fend for themselves. They're trying to figure out, do I go for the Omni? Do I go for the Madison? Like, what can I do to just go to the Olympics and not, not have to worry and be too stressed? And pretty much, yeah, October came around. And um, I was out of a team as of Lima when we found out um, money was getting kind of tight. Olympics were getting kind of tight. Uh, the team that I was riding for was pretty much, we were told that, hey, if you guys are going to the Olympics, we'll support you. And they were starting to see that that was starting to get a little bit narrow. So they cut the team kind of light and they were running out of funding. Um, but yeah, I haven't, once we got to October, I hadn't seen the team pretty much since then because I broke my collarbone in December, um, which left me out of worlds. And uh, yeah, I just, COVID hit and it, the whole world turned upside down on its head all in the matter of a couple of weeks, in my opinion. Um, I went from being without a team and thinking I was going to quit cycling to buying a van, uh, decking it out, planning out this big gravel calendar for 2021, and then went to Mid-South and then the pandemic hit. And then oh, I was wow. like, well, crap, I've pitched all these ideas to these sponsors. What am I going to do now? And that's why you guys are sitting here now. It's because I was like, well, let's do a podcast for these sponsors. Let's, that's, that's the kind of content we'll give them. And uh, that's what gets us here. And so, um, I love it. You, there's get, you, get bit, you gotta do it. Yeah. Do you get bit by the gravel bug or what? Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah it was yeah. nuts. I mean, I did mid South yeah. and it was, uh, I don't what know if you like? guys have ever experienced, um, mid South, but it's, it's literally, no. it's, it's one or the other. It's either going to be fast packed dirt, just super dusty, but packed dirt. Uh, I got lucky enough to ride it when it was straight peanut butter mud. So, uh, <laughs> My bike, my bike was probably 70 pounds when we finished with just mud. Um, wow. I had to get a new frame, had to get a new group set, had to get new shoes. I've um, heard this. I mean, I just destroyed that bike. Um, and it was my first gravel race. And it was one of those things where I got to experience like a whirlwind of emotions, which kind of opened up my mind to new cycling. Whereas like, I can suffer for four minutes, you know, or whatever. And I can, you know, a minute kilo. That's my, that's my thing. But when it came to eight hours, like I was, you know, I was happy at one moment. I was mellow at another moment. I kind of felt like I blacked out at one moment and just rode, mm -hmm. st stared at my hub a little bit. And then there was, there was times where I was like, if I stopped right now and I called somebody to come pick me up, would it, would it be quicker or would it be just faster if I get to the next rest stop? And <laughs> then yeah. then i had somebody pick yeah. me up. you know what i'm saying and like mm -hmm. that that was the process going through my head because i was like i knew if i called somebody that i gotta wait 
you know, I can't, you know, and so you're going to have to wait there for like an hour, two hours. And yeah. There's like ATVs coming through there. They're, the, the SAG vehicles were rented uh, from the uh, Stillwater ATV and uh, Jeep Club. So those were, those were your nice. SAG vehicles. Um, so, yeah, I got bit by the gravel bug. I, I enjoy it, and uh, I like the dirt. And being that I don't have a road team, that's my form of fitness. So, like, I can't do these road races and, and big events. I can just go do these gravel races, 200K, and it's, like, it's honestly like racing a bunch of one days, you know? which is, is kind of nice and it, it kind of, you know, gives that fitness um, that you kind of need that race fitness that you kind of need uh, for the track, um, right. which is, which is super beneficial. But yeah, I mean, as of right now, we're waiting to hear if there'll be any team USA camps for 2024. We just had Magnus Sheffield do uh, the junior world record, which is awesome. So that, that brings a lot he's, of clout. He's so, impressive. So impressive. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't even look tired in the, uh, what was it? Their junior world road race when he was third. Yeah. I was, I was watching him. He didn't even look tired. Well, if you guys haven't talked to that yeah. kid yet, you need to, because he's All like, right. he, I don't, I don't know if I should be worried about him just because when I chatted with him, I felt like I was talking to a well seasoned pro that wow. was just really? like, Oh yeah. I mean, the kid's 18 and, and like, I felt like I, he was like giving me wisdom, like just yeah. leaking knowledge Polished, 10 years eh? older than him. And yeah, he's just, very humble yeah i like very, that humble yeah yep. and just wants to learn just wants yep. to learn and he's like one of the comments that he made on our podcast was like i'll get my chance i'll get my opportunity and for uh, sure and to me that that like that's impressive and we don't have a lot of that um in in, in cycling period and much less in america um so yeah pete he just broke the what the junior world record in the pursuit right by like 10 seconds right uh i don't think wow. it was that much maybe I think it was maybe a little less but like i think it was like three or four but it, but that's okay. huge i mean maybe 10 seconds over taylor taylor yeah Finney's it was ten, it was it was it was 10 seconds over taylor finney so the u.s national record yeah uh, that's the right. world record was uh uh two or three seconds but Impressive. if you put it into perspective he was doing one minute kilos in the middle of the ride and so that's 60k an hour um <sighs> that he's doing and he in he's 18 years old and so yeah. if he went another K that would have put him in the top five of IP worlds. That's wow. Impressive. Yeah. So wow. there, there's, there's a lot of things to consider when you start playing that stuff out. So it's, 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 it's pretty cool. Um, yeah. I think he's got a bright future. Yeah. It's cool to see rally picked him up for uh, yeah, next yeah. year. Yeah. yeah. So, but anyways, before we close out the podcast, last question, this is for both of you guys. And, you know, either Pete or Tyler, you guys can go first. Um, if you could have coffee with one individual, dead or alive, who would that individual be and why? Oh, Pete, you, you go first. <laughs> um, oh, man, there'd be such a list, especially if you say dead or alive. Dead or there'd alive, be, man. It's there'd nice. be a thousand honorable mentions, but... Um, <laughs> Probably Martin Malcolm Luther Gladwell. King for me. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Oh. Yeah. Who's, your, who's yours, Pete? Sorry. Malcolm Gladwell. Oh, nice. Writer. Yeah. Love yeah. it. Love it. All most right. most thought provoking author I know. That's good. So, how would you guys take your coffee? Oh, um, yeah, that's a big one. Yeah, a, a dark roast Italian something and uh, just black. Perfect. Yeah, right. Americano. Yeah, Americano. somewhere. Keep from Colombia, some coffee from Colombia. Yeah. Well, cool guys. How about, how about you, John? See, this is awesome. I, I've had this question turned on me a few times, so I get to I get to switch it up on whoever I'm feeling at that current moment. And mine yeah. would probably be Muhammad Ali. And 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 because nice. I was, I was nice. watching, uh, and the reason why I say that is because we had Kevin on yesterday, and he was talking about Conor McGregor, and I was like thinking about is there any fighters that I would love to like sit down and have a coffee with and it's like either it's between him and mike tyson like i'd love to just like sit down and have a cup of coffee with those guys um yeah because i think the fighter mentality is insane like these guys, i do too yeah yeah they yeah. train for one to two fights a year most big fighters one fight a year and and sometimes even longer than a year and that's it yeah that's it 
And I mean, back in the day, like when Tyler was racing, they're doing like 80 race days. And like, it's gotten, yeah. sh- it's gotten shorter now for a lot of the guys. Cause it's very specified. And, um, you know, back in the day when guys were like sprinters were winning, you know, tons of stages of the tour, it's a completely different tour now. Um, and so right. it's completely different cycling too. And, and I mean, even with, in, in America with track cycling, you had Jamie Carney who would win the sprint tournament at nationals as well as win the Omnium. And, and I mean, he would, he would do it all. Um, with the Carney brothers, they would just race it all. Yeah. And so with fighting though, it's just so interesting to me how those guys get their minds right for like 11 months for one, one fight, one event, and you can lose it all right there at that one event. And it, it just, it's bonkers to me. And like, uh, yeah. even with, uh, who's that? There, there's a pri- there's a guy, um, I'm blanking on his name right now. It's not Mike Tyson, not Muhammad Ali. It's the other one. Um, anyways, 15 and 0. Um, but being 15 and 0, I mean, like the guy literally makes tons and tons of money and he just literally prize fights. That's all he does and takes certain fights, but trains specifically for those certain fights. And it's unreal to me how they how they come up with it when they want to do it. And yeah, it'd be interesting. And I'd probably take my coffee. <laughs> Light roast, there you light go. roast coffee, um, the pour over. Um, if we're in the states, now if we're in Italy, I'd take a shot of espresso. That's Where's awesome. your favorite velodrome to ride? On? Favorite velodrome to ride? Probably, uh, um, probably Cochabamba, Bolivia. Oh wow! Super fast. Anything in South really? America? Um, yeah, I mean, because it's pretty much on. You're riding on the moon, so we're yeah. doing like. We're doing warm up, warm up laps at, you know, national record pace. I think we, wow. yeah, when we were doing team pursuit right before we set the national record, we were literally training like repeats at the national record pace. Is so, that because of altitude? Yep, altitude, um, air density, and then being that it's in South America, it's so hot that you're just flying. I mean, there's like, I think there's like some ruling now with the track cycling. They, they can't go to, they can't do world cups there because the sprints are getting too fast. Like the sprinters are getting hurt winding up at wow. the rail and like going over the rail because they're getting too fast now. I mean, those wow. guys are doing like almost, I think the world record was set in Cochabamba at like nine and one, which it's, I mean, you're cooking at that point. <laughs> so so yeah, it's, 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 it's getting quick and, um, you, you just literally become superhuman. Like you almost think that you're missing a lap or two, uh, doing races over there. So that's, that's gotta be one of my favorite tracks. So that's anyways, cool. Um, well, we gotta a, have you on. Yeah, yeah. That'd be great, for, man. For, for sure. And we, we have somebody else you should interview. Um, I was reading yesterday, USA cycling just brought on four new board members and one of them's Reggie Miller. Yeah, yeah. Great interview. Yeah, How yeah. cool is that? I was thinking about I was thinking about reaching out to him here soon. Um, yeah, because he's been on he's been on Payson's podcast, and I think he's kind of got. I think is he doing like some agent stuff now, or like he's still on TNT too. I think. Yeah. Um, I don't know what else he's up to. Man, I would love to talk to that guy though. Like, I'm yeah. a big basketball fan, and Reggie Miller is he's cool. such a badass. Well. Yeah. You know, and I might be leaking. I might get in trouble for this, but I was I had Dante on the podcast, and we chatted about Seal, the singer. Supposedly, he has gotten into cycling, and he knows Dante pretty well. Loves cycling. Uh, I was working with like BMC and like some other no shit companies, and so yeah, that's crazy. He's, he he loves it, man, and so that's that's pretty cool. So there's a lot of a lot of cool people getting into cycling. So it's cool to see Reggie Miller get on the board, um, yeah. because I think that that brings a light to to the outside world you know and 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 i mean who doesn't know reggie miller you know exactly so, yeah so yeah that's, that's cool um and a lot of cool things happening so but anyways guys like i said i didn't want to keep you guys all night i really appreciate having you guys on um you guys are the bomb um and yeah guys if, if you haven't already please check out the adventure podcast link in the description below as well as subscribe to me uh, coffee and van chats that'd be great because i know you guys are coming back to week to week and you just haven't hit that subscribe button you're probably doing the same thing to adventure podcast so just go ahead and hit the subscribe button it really helps out a lot anyways guys take it easy cheers Thanks.